if this was breast cancer, God forbid, instead of multiple sclerosis, would it be okay with you to use the fourth or fifth best drug available to treat you? Howdy, Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center. Today, speaking about three inflammatory questions that I sometimes ask patients. I'm gonna ask you those questions today. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, thank you very much. Please subscribe down below and make sure to click the notifications button so that you can get all of our newest content. I would like to share with you an experience I had several years back when I met a fantastic family. The patient was a young woman in her early 30s and she was accompanied by her fantastic husband, her mother, her father, her sister, and her brother-in-law. She also brought her three-year-old daughter. Now the patient had suffered a devastating attack which had affected her left arm and leg. She had significant spinal cord damage. And when I looked at her MRI, it was riddled with spots. When I entered the room and extended my hand and said, hi, my name's Aaron Boster. She said, hi, I refuse to take Tysabri. And as we continued to talk, I felt it necessary to stop the conversation and to ask her three inflammatory questions. Now, I'm gonna share those questions with you right now. I'll also tell you that over the years, I've asked many families these exact questions. But I have to warn you, they're inflammatory on purpose. They're intended to help you think. Think beyond today. Think down into the future. And to help you understand why I feel it's necessary that we use the most effective therapy that you're comfortable with as early as possible. With that preamble, here are my questions. The first question I asked, I said to her, God forbid if this was breast cancer instead of multiple sclerosis, would you be okay with me using the fifth best drug available to treat you? Now she paused, shook her head and said, what, well, no. And when I asked her why, she said, because I don't wanna die from breast cancer. I understand that. And in the modern era, we don't expect people to die from MS, but there's a risk of becoming neurologically devastated. And in my opinion, that might be worse. The second question, I said, your beautiful three-year-old daughter will someday grow up and want to get married. And let's pretend that she gets married in her late 20s. Are you okay with wheeling your daughter down the aisle on her special wedding night? Or is it your desire to walk? She pulled herself together, as I'm trying to do right now. And she said, I want to walk. The third question, I asked her husband. I said, sir. I've shown you your wife's MRI. I've shown you the brain damage, and I need to know from you how much more brain damage is acceptable. As we treat your wife over the next 20, 30, 40 years, is 10% acceptable, 15%? I need you to tell me what's acceptable. He said, none. I did not ask these questions to be mean. I asked these questions to help her think beyond the now, to help her think about the context, the risk benefit of a drug inside the context of the disease itself. I ask them to help people understand why I believe firmly that we have to apply the most effective disease modifying therapy that they're comfortable with as early as possible. Because in order to beat this disease, we have to have our sights deep into the future, 20, 30, 40 years. I oftentimes will tell people, I'm not trying to treat you for the 20 something you are now. You're doing fine. I'm trying to treat you for the 50 something. I need to speak to that guy and I need to understand his goals and he needs to be my partner in trying to beat this disease. My name is Aaron Boster with the Ohio Health MS Center. If you like what you just heard or even if you didn't like it but it was provocative, please subscribe so you can hear more content like it. And I would absolutely love to hear your questions and your comments. Please include them below.